Well, hello scrappers and welcome back to my channel. It's been a quite a while since I've done a scrap out teardown video. I just kind of figured I was repeating myself, you know, after a while, you know, tear this down, oh, tear it down again, oh, tear it down again. Who's going to want to see 10 videos of the same thing? So, but we got something a little new up here on the autopsy table today. Um, you know, in my last big scrap pickup, I got a whole bunch of these industrial label printers. Most of them were zebras. Now this uh, this one here is a much older one than most of the models I got. Most of them are newer and in much better condition. And I think a lot of them are going to be resellable. But this one, it's too old. It's uh, missing some pieces. It's definitely been uh, well used. I think this one is just going to get scrapped out. And it's heavy. Oh my goodness. Ugh. Close to 50 pounds, I'd say, on this one. Some of them are even heavier. Mostly steel. A lot of scrap steel there. But there's a few good pieces inside. There's some electronics inside I want to get. Um, there's a nice big stepper motor in there that I'd like to get. Um, and maybe a few other bits and pieces along the way. I think there's some big aluminum heat sinks and rails in there, if it's anything like the others I've taken apart. So, uh... We'll, uh, we'll have a look at it and see. Now, this part here opens up. This is where you load the print media in it. It's a thermal transfer printer. So here's the thermal transfer medium here. And then down here would be the label stock. Um, there's really not much on this side. Uh, the, the print head's up in here. And I may try and get the print head out, although I don't know if it's actually any good. It may be scrap. I don't really have a way of testing it on this printer. Um, all of the electronics, though, are over on this side, behind this. So you got to take that off to get at them. Um, got, you know, a few connectors on the back, power switch, um, accessory ports, which are not filled, so it doesn't have a lot of the nice accessories on it, unfortunately. Like I said, this is this was a low end older model no good to me so let me get some tools and we'll start taking it apart see what's in here now these printers one thing i do like about them is they are awfully easy to get into basically you just got to take out two screws and these screws aren't even stripped some of them are because people have got into them so many times over the years to try and fix something so this whole thing now should lift off yeah there we go. Okay. So there's there's the guts. There's the guts of it. It's actually got a, a little more electronics to it than the average one of these I take apart. They don't usually have a board here. So I don't know what that board's for. Can't really say. But uh, we got this big board down here. We got this board. We got this board. This board has a lot of gold plating on it. So definitely I want to harvest this board. Actually, it does have an accessory board installed. It's just not obvious from the outside. That's what that is. And then back behind here, this power supply. Actually, I don't think people have been into this printer too often because usually they don't bother putting this back on after they've got into it a couple of times. They just rip it off and forget about it. So there's power supply stuff. Huge aluminum heat sink down here. Big heavy aluminum heat sink. So we'll be wanting to get that. Uh, you know, there's lots of ribbon cables. The motor is really difficult to get to. And uh, I'll tell you more about it when we get towards it. Um, this one might actually have aluminum, aluminum pulleys. A lot of them are steel. So... I'll check those with a magnet. If they're aluminum, they might be worth trying to harvest. Usually they're steel and they just go to the scrapyard with the rest of the steel. Okay, let me get some more tools and we'll start taking her apart. Okay, I'm trying to give you a little better view inside. Of course, I'll just block the view once I start working over here, but uh, here we go. Let me take this little board out first. I remember seeing one of these in here before. I think, in most of the ones I'm taking apart, all this stuff is integrated into this board. 
So this may be just an older model. Had this extra board in it. It's got a few IC chips on it, a couple big transistors, quartz crystal. All right, let's start taking. See if we can get this big board here out. There's a lot involved in getting this one out, let me tell you. It's not easy. There's always a few screws that are hard to see. And then we got to get these uh, nuts off down here. This, uh, and of course you can't get a nut driver in there. How they assemble this thing, I'm not sure. But, uh, oh man, they got those on tight too. How they did it, I don't know. Huh. You see, they don't come through the bottom, so you can't you can't get to them easy. Try this. Probably not going to work any better, but this is always the annoying hard part right here. Oh, it turned. All right, good. Turned a little bit. And break it loose. That's the hard part. Yeah, that's painful. Oh, I think it might have turned. It turned a little bit. Yeah, maybe I was dreaming. This one I'm sure turned. Yeah, that one's loose. I think it's fingered loose. Well, it was. A couple turns and it's no longer finger loose. Sometimes you take stuff apart and you wonder, how the heck did they get this thing together? They must have some special tool for this, because I know the technicians who come out to work on these things sometimes have to replace this whole assembly. So there's got to be a way. Maybe they've got like some sort of offset nut driver. I wouldn't be surprised. Some special tool by making these things difficult to get apart. I mentioned the motor earlier. I'll tell you what, the motor it's all but impossible to get in and out of this thing. Again, they must have specialized tools. I have figured out a way to get them out, but it's pretty destructive. This one is just going to fight me the whole way off. Don't you just love it when that happens? The whole way off. That the bolt was spinning, but I think it I think it's I think the nuts actually coming off. It's just like I said, fighting me the whole way. There, the last couple of turns. Alright. Let's see here. Is that it? Yeah, that's it. A couple of uh, wire ties need to cut. Maybe out a couple of cables. Okay, what's the secret on these? And there's that. 
and look at this. This has got this huge, huge aluminum heat sink down here. It's got a whole boatload of power transistors and stuff bolted onto it. In fact, we'll take that apart next and I'll show you. Now this piece is steel. That's steel. That's just some sort of fiberglass spacer. Here's all those transistors right there. You get this heat sink off. It's got a thin piece of aluminum RFI shielding on this other side too. So here's that aluminum heat sink, and this is a chunky piece of aluminum too. That is a heck of a thing. It's heavy. Love it. And then here's this RFI shielding, which I'm going to take a few more screws out. Well, standoffs to get off. And then there's all these power transistors down under here, underneath this silicone. And then here's the silicone heat transfer material. So there's the board right there. That's the power board. And we got a couple logic boards in here to get out too. I'll get that uh, thin piece of aluminum off there later. Get rid of this stuff. Okay, so let's see here. What are we going to need to get these logic boards out? Let's see if this bit will do it or if it's too big. That's too big. Find another bit. Okay, let's try it again. Huh. Well, it's spinning. Eh. I can't get in there. Either. Yeah, I'm going to need a. I need a slotted screwdriver too, small one. Alright. Let me go back to the tools. Let's see here. So, just to make life interesting, they've got a mix of slotted and very small Phillips screws holding this board in. And I'll bet, you know, I haven't taken one of these apart in a while. Yeah, but I need to take this end plate off too to get it out. Oh, come on now. Huh. Huh. Yeah, it's a real mix of screw types and sizes here. You'd think they'd stick with one size, they'd probably get a volume discount. Yeah, okay, it's coming back to me now. I'm going to have to take the screws. There's a Centronics connector over here, and there's a uh, a uh, nine pin D connector over here. I'm going to have to take them out in order to get the board out. And naturally, ah, see, everything's held in with a different kind of screw. since I've taken one of these apart. But I sure do have a boatload of them now. I'm hoping I can get a few of the newer ones up and running and sell them because they go for a lot of money, even used. Shipping's going to be a bear, though. They are heavy. But, you know, that's what the buyer will have to pay. I'll just have to creep darn things up. Okay, so we got another screw there.
Okay, somebody has been in this before because that screw's not all the way in. Okay, where are the other screws holding this thing in? Now this one spins kind of freely, but nothing's happening. It's connected to this board here. Let's see about this one. This one wants to strip. It doesn't want to come out. Wait a minute. Is it spinning? No, it's not. But it, again, it doesn't seem to be what the world is holding this thing in. Ah, I see another hidden screw down here behind these wires. Speaking of wires, i got to disconnect all these wires, too. There we go. table off. These logic boards are nice out of these printers. You got uh, a fair amount of gold plating on them on both sides. Lots of chips and they're the kinds of chips that don't have a lot of uh, excess plastic to them. They're the really skinny kind. So you know, gold-wise, they're they're pretty good for pound. <clears throat> of course, it takes a lot of them to make a pound. There we go. All right, it's a bit of a battle, but there's that. Up here we've got a, uh, a compact flash card connector with lots of gold pins in it. And then down here we've got a different kind of memory card connector with lots of gold pins in it. Lots of gold plating, lots of IC chips. In fact, this board slots into this board. I'll have to take all these little screws and uh, standoffs off. But I do believe there's a lot of gold connecting these two boards together, too. Let's see. Get it apart. Ah! It's going to spin in my fingers, isn't it? That finger's already sore. Yeah, so we got gold in these connectors here too. So nice little boards. So that's about all of the good electronics. There's some wiring in here, a fair amount of wiring actually. Um, I was gonna check these with a magnet, wasn't I? I didn't bring my magnet over. Let me go get a magnet. Okay, there. I, I've cleared some of the wire out of the way, so you can see in here a little better now. Um, <clears throat> this cable goes back to the motor, which is on the other side of this steel plate. You've got four nut certs here in the steel plate that the motor is bolted to from the other side. Now, if you remember when I had this thing turned around and opened up the other side, the print head and all the print mechanism is over here. All that has to be removed to get this motor out. And that is a royal pain in the butt. And even after you remove all that stuff, you still can't get to the bolts that hold it in. You need really long T-handle Allen wrenches, which I don't have, um, to get to those bolts. And even then, it's very difficult to get to one or two of them. So, if I was going to take this motor out, I have found a shortcut. Like I said it's a little earlier, it's a little destructive, but it works. Um, I just drill out the backs of these four bolts. They're not hardened, and um, at least the ones I've dealt with aren't hardened. Not that hard anyway. And I can just drill them right out. The motor will fall right out. you still got to remove all that sheet metal and stuff on the other side to get the motor out, but at least you can get it out. It's a lot of work, but you can get it out. Now, it's a big chunky stepper motor, like this one, right here. And I already have a boatload of these from stripping out these printers. I'm not taking any more motors out of it. Um, these, these are good for any kind of project where you need a stepper motor, a good hefty, high, 
high torque stepper motor, bipolar stepper motor. These are great for that, moving X, Y to Z tables, that kind of thing. They're really handy for it. Plus they sell on eBay, but uh, you know, getting them out is a real pain in the butt. And it's heavy, it's really heavy. I'm just gonna leave it in there and let it add to the weight when this thing goes to the scrapyard, because I've already got a bunch of these. And then, what did I do with my magnet? So yeah, I'm just going to leave the motor in there on this one. Um, I'll tell you what, if you need any standoffs, <laughs> this thing is full of standoffs. I've harvested a few standoffs too over the years out of these things. There's big ones, there's little ones, there's tall ones, there's short ones, there's steel ones, there's nylon ones. There's all kinds of standoffs. You know, um, hardware. It's a hardware store, basically. Now I was going to check these with a magnet. And out, oh, they're steel. They look like die cast aluminum or even die cast zinc, but they're steel. All right. Yeah, they're all steel. Okay. I thought maybe some of these uh, um, pulleys were going to be aluminum. They kind of have the look of it, but nope, they're steel. So, okay, so they're staying in. I'm not going to bother taking them out. Um, up here in the corner, up here, there's a uh, an LCD readout that shows on the front panel over here, and there's some switches back here. There's a there's a um, circuit board with switches on it. It's really difficult to get out and there's really not enough on it to make it worth worth your while in my opinion. Um, this LCD readout is a type that's very popular. It's like two lines by 16 characters used in a lot of retro computing projects. Um, I have a whole I have a whole channel dedicated to retro computing. Check that out sometime. But I've, I've already harvested a few of these and I don't really need any more and they're, they're kind of a pain to get out without destroying them. So I'm just going to leave that in there. Um, so I guess that's about it, you know. Um, I would cut the motor wires off, but eh, I'll leave that for some other scavenger in case he wants to go after the motor. Good luck to him. So um, I do have a bunch more of these printers, newer models. Um, all the same type. This is kind of an oddball one, which is why I stripped it down. Um, if any of those don't work, I will take them apart and just rob them for spare parts so I can get some of the others up and running because printers like these, especially the newer models that I have out back, um, they go for, you know, close to a thousand dollars even used if they're working. So they told me that most of the printers I got were working, they were just obsolete. I think this one was one of the ones that wasn't working because it's missing some pieces on the front. So I said, well, I'm just going to scrap this one out. Anyway, I've thrown all the steel back into it. Keep the weight up. I'll put the cover back on it. I kept a couple screws aside to screw the cover back on. I'll throw it in my utility trailer with all the other stuff that's going to the scrap yard. And, uh, hey, even after all the stuff I took off of it, there's still about 50, 60 pounds of stuff here. So let's just do a little quick review of what I got off of this thing. Got all this aluminum, including, oh, this big, chunky angle piece of heat sink right here. That is that is a heavy duty piece of aluminum, let me tell you. Got this aluminum plate, got to knock the, knock the nut certs out of it. Uh, got these electronics boards here. A uh, couple of okay ones, and then two two really nice ones that have a lot of gold on them. Uh, gold in the connectors here, 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 and lots of gold plating on the board. Gold in the connectors here, gold plating on both sides. Some nice ICs, including a gold corner BGA. This one's got uh, gold in the connectors here, gold in the connectors here, gold in the connector here. Uh, big flat pack, lots of smaller chips. So. Yeah, I'll get some good gold out of this. these. Yeah, they're, they're only low-grade boards, really. And then still got all this. Let's see, I got I also got all the wires I cut out of it. And I still got all this close to 50 pounds of steel. So, yeah. The thing's a treasure trove. All right. I guess that'll do it. I hope you found this uh, scrap out at least a little bit interesting, educational, killed some time, whatever. Give the video a thumbs up, give it a like, and subscribe to see future videos. There'll be more of them coming out, Fast and Furious. Um, I have a lot more of these printers. Most of them are models so very similar to this one, but newer. But I do have a few oddball ones. If any of them look interesting, I may do another scrap out video on them. 
But there'll be lots of other videos coming out in the future on other subjects too, so subscribe to see those future videos and press that little bell icon that YouTube makes you press to be notified when new videos come out. And thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you in the next video.